Hello, today we're going to do an unboxing of this APC battery backup system. Uh, it has a runtime of 125 minutes with a PC. We're going to be using it with an unconventional purpose, so that should make things a little bit interesting. And uh, yeah, let's just jump into it. Before I open this, let's take a look at the different sides of the box. So this is obviously the front and uh, it boasts 10 outlets, two USB chargers, a USB type C with five amps, which will make that charging a little bit quicker, a surge protector and an auto shutdown software, along with AVR, which is, you know, automatic voltage regulator. Let's flip this box around. Back end uh, just kind of shows what's on the back of the machine, what the outlets are. There's also, a little description of everything, the LCD display, cold start capability, and uh, this box is in uh, two languages. It's bilingual French-English, as this is a Canadian version. There's really no difference between the different international versions, usually other than the cord itself and uh, the voltages that it's designed to run at 240 for Europe and 120 for North America and parts of Japan. This here is the side. Not really much to write home about. The other side. Now the top here has an interesting chart and it shows the specs for this unit, which is the BN 1350M2.ca for Canada. Now, uh, it gives a few examples of different things you can run. And uh, with something really small, like a little monitor and a computer, you should be able to get 125 minutes. If you were running a 42 inch TV along with a game console, you would get about 13 minutes. So it depends on the wattage being used. Now the item we are testing, I'll be running at approximately 150 watts. So I am estimating we will get about 30 minutes. So let's see uh, if that is correct. All right, let's cut it open. So the uh, regular clear tape, let's see how it's packed. Well, it's packed in some really uh, tough uh, cardboard. Now um, it says if your product is not working, don't take it back to the store, call them first. So I would say that this is uh, pretty heavy duty packaging here. I feel like I could probably stand on that and it would support my body weight. Lots of uh, room in here. I like that it's not styrofoam. Honestly, I kind of feel like there's uh, too much styrofoam in my life. So to see this kind of biodegradable packing is great. Now let's pull the unit out of the box. Well, it's kind of stuck. So it is really well packed. And this plastic here is quite thick. What else do we have in the box? We have our cables, instructions, and another piece of uh, the rigid cardboard material. So I will just put that in there. I like to save the box with uh, new electronic items because if there is a problem and you are returning it, it uh, it's a lot faster and easier to ship if you have the original box. Now, one of the first things I noticed in unboxing this is uh, it's heavy and second, there's a uh, quality assurance test for this unit with the operator ID. This unit was tested on the uh, April the 29th, 2001 at 7.21 p.m. And it has the station ID, the operator ID, the serial number of the unit, uh, a handwritten signature on it. So that's actually quite interesting to see because over the years I've bought a lot of things and uh, when you get them, they're just not working and they all have some, uh, you know, inspected by A3 sticker on there. But this, I feel like uh, the extra effort was taken. 
to actually inspect the unit. Now let's cut the plastic off here. It's uh, taped on in the side here. I'll just show it on camera. We'll slice through it like that. And why not go this way too here? So this unit does have some weight to it. Uh, most likely, uh, obviously due to the batteries. Now, let's take a look here. So, this is the front, and uh, this is my favorite part. Let's do it up. That's so satisfying to take that plastic off. I just love it. And then uh, we'll take the quality assurance sticker off. And that can go back in the box. So uh, APC, the brand here, I know they've been making these battery backup units for a really long time. Now, the box says APC by Schneider Electric. So I don't know if Schneider Electric bought these guys or if they were always a division of Schneider Electric. But let me tell you something. Here in Canada, we used to use a lot of breakers for the house that were made by a company called Federal or Federal Pioneer. I know they were sometimes used in the States. Schneider Electric bought the rights to make those breakers. And instead of making more of these things, they're not making them. Apparently there was some lawsuits involved and these kinds of things. So now the problem is, and my beef with Schneider Electric and why I don't like them is, you gotta buy the breakers second hand. So, uh, and they're very expensive because everybody marks it up. And if you need it, you need it and you're not gonna change your whole panel. Very disappointed with Schneider Electric. I've called them numerous times. They've always told me, oh yeah, we're gonna be, uh, you know, starting production of the breaker soon. Oh, the plant's going, you'll have them in January of 2020. And, uh, you know, so my experiences with Schneider, honestly, uh, leave a little room there uh, for improvement. But anyways, back to this topic at hand, I apologize about the complaint there. So here we got the APC logo on the side. And uh, there is some instructions here. So uh, it says stop, connect battery. So apparently we have to open this up and uh, connect the battery inside. So let's see uh, how this peels off here. I've mangled it but you know that's how these things go when you do an unboxing video it's just raw unboxing right now how does this uh, slide open here Well, here the side plate comes off, so you just gotta push down a little bit. And then it says, pull up. Connect battery. So the uh, positive terminal is disconnected here. So let's uh, connect it. And there we go. So this is uh, two batteries. It looks like two six volt batteries. It doesn't actually say. Uh, they're two Schneider electric batteries. Most likely they're made by somebody else. The batteries are made in the Philippines. So here's what it looks like in there. And what I did is I just connected this cable onto that lead there. And then we'll put this part back on here. Hmm. 
interesting. Doesn't seem to be too thrilled about going back in place. Well, perhaps I gotta start it down here. Yeah, that's the ticket. Too bad I tore that thing off to open it, eh? I probably could look at it right now. So, this is the back here, and now let's uh, open up the manual and the cables. I should probably take a look through this first here. Now here we have a uh, proprietary cable of some sort. It looks like a LAN cable, but I can tell by the wire configuration it's not. And uh, it has a USB connector. This is most likely, um, yeah, to a data port to connect to the computer where uh, this end connects in here. The USB would connect to the computer so that the software you download would um, be able to shut this thing off. So if you had a blackout and you're running your computer, that your computer would know to shut down. And this here is just a standard coax cable for cable TV, which uh, I guess is to prevent shorts. There's also a uh, LAN connector. I've seen on older models on other videos on the internet that they used to have a telephone jack. However, uh, this one does not have that. So, and you know, here it shows those things. Here's your product registration keys. And what else do we got here? Something really tiny print. Probably some kind of legal policy. Lost interest already. Safety information save this guy. De-energizing safely. Battery safety. Replacing the batteries. Which is one thing that's nice about these units is that you can replace the batteries. Comes in different languages. And then we got the instructions here. Again, lots of warnings. It shows what all these ports are. Here's a diagram of uh, how to connect the battery for the first time. And then uh, what the things mean on the LCD display screen. Uh, different alarms and system errors. Uh, troubleshooting guides, what the buttons do, specifications, typical recharge time is 16 hours. Uh, this one here, the maximum load is uh, 810 watts. The device I will be running is a tiny little heater. You might be asking, why are you going to run a heater off of this? Well, it turns out... Uh, I decided to go about this because years ago you used to be able to buy a big battery backup at Canadian Tire, which is a local Canadian retailer, and it was large enough that you would have it was on a dolly and it had big batteries and you could power your fridge for a few hours or a heater or such device during a blackout. And out here in the country, we get a lot of blackouts. There's blackouts it seems like every few weeks some of them are two minutes some of them are an hour i've even experienced a few that are five or six hours and this summer i had built my missus merlo mama a temporary greenhouse and this greenhouse it was kind of a shed that i converted into a greenhouse where she could keep her plants throughout the winter as it gets really cold and it will be uh, it is currently heated with electric heat. Now my concern is when we're not out here in the country, should there be a blackout or a power outage of some kind, I know it will retain heat for several hours before it drops below zero and then killing the plants. But I just kind of wanted to experiment with just any source of heat as a emergency heat source. So 
even if this thing runs for an extra half an hour, that's long enough to keep some air movement and warm air going for most blackout situations. And I know the shed would retain its heat for probably four to six hours, maybe even a full day, and still manage to stay above zero degrees Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit. And I just feel like having this uh, extra layer of insurance where you're getting a little bit of heat, even if it's only for an extra 30 minutes, is better than not doing anything about a possible scenario where you end up with a blackout. Well, let's grab a cord and plug this thing in and see how it operates. All right, I got the cord all set up here. Now, uh, looking at this device here, we can see that the uh, cord comes wound up with a twist tie and then here is the plug and it's one of these nice flat plugs which I really like you know you can plug in to things from the side and here's the moment of truth well I hear it doing something and let's see what's going on So it says online, zero low, full battery, and 123 volts. And uh, 123 is uh, a little higher than normal. I know in the city, when I test uh, my wall sockets, I get about 112 volts. But out here, we're a lot closer to the source of power, which is hydroelectric. And uh, I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but I think being closer to the dam that's generating the power, I've noticed over the years here, sometimes the voltages are, you know, 126, 125. I've even had 127 right from the wall. It does fluctuate a little bit and everything works better out here in the country. Honestly, if you have a stove, it heats up quicker. You plug in a tea kettle, it heats up quicker your uh you know any device it just seems to function better with that tiny little bit of extra juice that we got going on there so it's uh shut off into uh some kind of standby mode well so there we have it it appears to be functioning now let's try it out put some load on it and see what happens All right, now that we're in the greenhouse, let's plug it in. All right, and we'll turn the unit on. So, um, shows it online, and that there's a hundred. 79 minutes of charge. And the battery does seem to be charging itself. Now, one thing I'd noticed is when I had unplugged it while I was filming the video, the battery drained quite quick with no load. So we'll see what happens with the load here. All right, I've plugged in this little heater and uh, let's turn it on. And it seems to be running. Now, here comes the test. I'll unplug the power supply and we'll simulate a, a power failure. And it shows roughly 18, 16 minutes, 15 minutes, 14 minutes, 13 minutes. I'll let you know how long it lasted. So we're using this with quite the unconventional use. 
It currently just shows a small load on there. It's been stuck at 13 minutes for a while, much longer than a minute. However, I don't expect these gauges to be completely accurate. Uh, it does beep to let you know the device has no power. And uh, yeah, so there's this little 170 watt load going. I can feel the heat from the device, so we know it's still working and the little fans going. And this is a continuous load. See a lot of devices that would be plugged into this probably wouldn't. One thing I would say is uh, I probably wouldn't plug my printer or other such item into this device in case you had a blackout and you were in the midst of printing something. It might suck out the juice quite quick, especially if it was a larger laser printer. All right. So this device here has been running for about 14 minutes and uh, just moved down to three, which means uh, I probably would get about 18 minutes with this heater running. What I'm gonna do now is plug it back in as uh, I don't actually like draining batteries right down to zero. Part of my experience in life has been that uh, if you drain a battery right down, just gonna plug it back in here if you drain the battery right down uh, many times it uh, it tends to weaken it so I'll plug it back in to charge here it seems to show a, a lower voltage here but mind you this uh, buildings an outbuilding and it's a lot further from the house so uh, even though elsewhere on the property I usually get over 120 volts uh, here it seems a bit lower, but that could also be because of the battery charging. But yeah, there you have it. So I would say for me, for my little use in heating this, uh, providing some emergency heat for a space that's about 100 square feet, this is uh, going to suit my needs as if there was ever a power outage. Uh, there would be, you know, roughly 20 minutes of extra heat happening in here. And as I had mentioned, sometimes these outages can last a few hours. And yeah, well, thank you very much for watching. I know this is, again, an unconventional use here for this device. But again, uh, that's life. Sometimes you just got to hack things together. I hope you enjoyed the unboxing. Thank you for watching.